Welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans for the fans. And I am your host, Conrad Cushman, and we are going to review WrestleMania 34. WrestleMania 34 took place in New Orleans, Louisiana from the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Uh, WrestleMania, as far as a show in its entirety, uh, it was okay. It's a, a middle ground WrestleMania, and I will get into the overall presentation of things throughout this. Let's start off with the pre-show first. Uh, the first match in the pre-show was the fifth Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Overall, I gave the Battle Royal a C. Um, the ending was pretty good, though. Once it got down to the last four guys, it, well, not even four, it really came down to three. It came down to Matt Hardy, Baron Corbin, and Mojo Raleigh. Uh, Baron Corbin and Mojo Raleigh have previously won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, and Matt Hardy was looking to win for the first time. Matt Hardy then got assisted by Bray Wyatt, who we haven't seen since he fell into the lake of reincarnation, and he came back to assist Matt Hardy, and Matt Hardy wins the fifth Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Um, pretty cool to see this. I'm more interested to see where Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy's characters go going forward which is what WrestleMania should do a lot of the times. Uh, so I hope to see something better for both of them, and I've wanted to see Bray Wyatt as a babyface for a long time, so this should be pretty cool to see. Once again, overall grade for that match was a C. Next, we get to the Cruiserweight Championship Tournament Finals, which had Cedric Alexander versus Mustafa Ali. Uh, let me just say that Cedric Alexander has been earning his way to this championship belt, and Mustafa Ali has been impressing along the way. So both guys definitely deserve this. Um, in a pretty decent match that I felt needed about 5 to 10 more minutes to get a better grade, um, Cedric Alexander becomes the cruiserweight champion with a lumbar check to Mustafa Ali. I give it a B plus. Excellent match, and it's good to see Cedric Alexander, someone who I used to go watch at Ring of Honor house shows. Uh, make it to the WWE, so congratulations on that. Next, we had the WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal. Uh, the Women's Battle Royal was nah, it was average, just like the guys. Nothing too much really happened into it. They had some cool spots where it was the WWE girls versus NXT girls. But other than that, the best part was at the end where it came down to Sasha and Bayley. And Bailey grabbed Sasha and threw her over the top rope. And you think Bailey has won the Battle Royal. But Naomi stayed on the outside and eventually eliminated her. And Naomi is the first, supposedly, if WWE wants you to believe that, uh, WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal winner. That also got to see. But that's it for the pre-show, guys. Join me as I talk the main card after this. Let's talk about the opening contest for WrestleMania. It was a triple threat match for the Intercontinental Championship that had The Miz, who was the champion, versus Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor. Uh, on my preview show that I did, I also recommended that this match open, and I don't think it was a mistake at all. Uh, WWE made the right call having this match open up the match. It was a good back and forth match. If you've seen their match from Monday Night Raw, you knew that this was a good choice and that these guys were going to deliver. Um, they all hit their usual spots, went through everything. Uh, this was a solid triple threat match. I give it a B plus. And Seth Rollins walks out as the new Intercontinental Champion after this. We move on to the SmackDown Live Women's Championship match. We had Charlotte Flair, who is the champion, versus Asuka. This was my match of the night. I gave it an A minus. Um, Charlotte Flair and Asuka pulled out all the stops with excellent moonsaults, excellent submission holds, going back and forth, back and forth. The crazy part about this match is the ending, though. And this is the only thing that I think hurts it, and it's not the ending of the match so much as to what happens going forward. Asuka was built up based off of her streak. She had never lost since she's been in the WWE, um... That was the, her main thing. Charlotte was the women's champion that she's never faced, and she wanted to fight her after winning the Royal Rumble. Cool. In the end, after her leg not being worked over or anything, Charlotte Flair gets Asuka to tap out in her first loss to the figure eight, and they put Charlotte over big time here. The main question is, what happens going forward for Asuka? It looks like Charlotte's going to be positioned as one of the top females going forward 
Um, but Asuka, what happens to her? <laughs> we have the Fatal 4-Way U.S. Championship match next with Randy Orton, who was the champion, versus Bobby Roode versus Jinder Mahal versus Rusev. This match was not good to me. Uh, I gave it a C-. minus. It was barely passable, and it was only passable based on the reaction that Rusev got. Uh, this was not a good match. Randy Orton and Bobby Roode seem to be lost in the shuffle in SmackDown. Jinder Mahal, I don't know why they are pushing him or why they like him. Jinder Mahal gets the win in this match with the Coloss. And Rusev, who I feel is the most over and should be the U.S. champion, is not. And I can't explain why it didn't go that way. Um, like I said, I gave this a C-. minus. I thought it could have been way better than it was. Next, we get into the mixed tag team match with Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey versus Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Hats off to everyone in this match. Um, I have to say that Ronda Rousey did impress. A lot of people weren't sure if she was going to be able to do it, myself included. Um, but she showed up. She looked good and had an excellent match. Stephanie McMahon, good job playing the heel role throughout this match. Um, Triple H sold for everybody and did his thing. And Kurt Angle just gave you that feel-good moment to see him back in the ring and having his run at WrestleMania. Um, I gave this match an overall B. Ronda Rousey did her thing. There were some clunky parts in there, but you know what? Didn't matter. Ronda Rousey was the spectacle and she did her thing in this match. Um, good job tapping out Stephanie with the armbar. So we have the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship match. It had the Usos versus the New Day versus the Bludgeon Brothers. I gave this an overall C, pretty much average. Um, the match was less than five minutes long. And the Usos and New Day got destroyed by the Bludgeon Brothers. And it was quick to the point, and we have new tag champs. Congratulations to Luke Harper and Eric Rowan for finally getting the tag titles. It's been a long time coming. So the next segment we have is John Cena was told earlier during the Charlotte Oscar match, probably right before it, I believe, to go in the back. It looked like a referee told me he had a match or something, and he got excited. Whatever. He comes out, thinks he's got a match coming up with the Undertaker. The lights go out, and who comes out? Who wants to walk with Elias? Um, Elias comes out playing a song for everyone in New Orleans, and Elias... Did his thing, got his WrestleMania moment, and John Cena looked disappointed walking up the ramp until he turns around and looks in the ring and finds the Undertaker's coat and hat from last year, right where it was left. Um, a lightning bolt goes off, and after that, you actually get to see the Undertaker come out, make his entrance, and the Undertaker destroys John Cena in this match. Literally destroys him. Um, cool spot, he gets him down. Uh, John Cena goes for the five-knuckle shuffle. As soon as he bounces off the ropes, the Undertaker turns and looks at him, and John Cena falls down to the ground, takes a choke slam, eats a tombstone. One, two, three. The Undertaker wins at WrestleMania. I was a little disappointed not to see the American Badass Undertaker at WrestleMania, but what are you going to do? Um, the Undertaker gets the victory there, and we'll see what the plans are for him going forward. I felt last year at WrestleMania 33, I was live in attendance, and I thought that was the end of The Undertaker. But we'll see what happens going forward. Next, we have Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Daniel Bryan gets a tremendous pop on his way out to the ring, and he is jumped from behind by Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. In the match... Um, before it even begins, I should say, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn powerbomb Daniel Bryan on the apron, and he is met by the medical team, and it looks like he's not even going to be in this match. And that leaves Shane McMahon to fend for himself. Shane McMahon fights off both of the guys. He throws those punches like he usually does. Um, and he did a coast-to-coast -coast on Sami Zayn from one side of the ring to the other. Daniel Bryan gets in the ring, and he is a house of fire with drop kicks, dives, kicks to the uh, chest. He's all over the place in this match. And Daniel Bryan did an excellent job. He knew how to get the crowd into this match. Did very well. The match ends with a running knee and a yes lock on Sami Zayn, who taps out, and they will not be rehired on SmackDown Live. And I had to give that match a grade of a B. Excellent job, Daniel Bryan. Glad to have you back. 
Next, we get into the Raw Women's Championship match. It was Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax. This storyline could have a wrestling fan feeling either way about it. Either you're going to love it or you're going to hate it. Um, basically, this was the Mean Girl storyline. Alexa Bliss, who is the Mean Girl in this situation and the champion, uh, basically talked a lot of mm-hmm. crap about her former best friend, Nia Jax. And what long t- what happens is Nia Jax's feelings are hurt. Uh, she It's like she's being bullied, basically, because of her size, how big she is, and Alexa's calling her stupid, big, dumb, whatever. And Nia Jax winds up getting the victory here. I felt they could have stretched this out a little bit longer by having Nia Jax not win the belt at this show, but at Backlash. But Nia Jax wins the Raw Women's Championship, and I'm happy to see it. I'm, I'm not angry at all at the result. Good for Nia Jax. Happy to see her win. Gave that match a C+. So we had the WWE Championship match next, which had AJ Styles versus the Royal Rumble winner Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, This is a rematch from Wrestle Kingdom 10, and I don't think it lived up to the hype personally for myself and a lot of others who watched the match. This match could have been a lot better, but I think WWE had them hold back for the ending, which I'll get to and explain. I gave it a B-plus overall. Um, I felt it could have been better, though, because their other match before I would have gave an A or an A-plus to it. This match was okay, and it was getting rolling, and I felt it needed like 10 more minutes, maybe, of higher spots and getting into it more, or maybe it needed a little bit more time. I'm not sure what was off about it, but like I said, I think it was the ending, and they were told to hold back. AJ Styles and Nakamura, it comes down to the end of the match, and Nakamura goes for the Kinshasa, and AJ Styles rolls through and hits him with a Styles Clash. Nakamura loses the match to the shock of everybody, who a a lot of people thought he was going to win. Nakamura takes the belt and basically gets down on one knee and hands the belt to AJ, and it looked like there was going to be some respect between the two. But when Nakamura was down there, he ends up low-blowing AJ Styles after the match and then proceeded to beat the living hell out of him with Kinshasa's on the outside, stomps and kicks to his head. Um, Nakamura really went to work on him. I give this a B-plus, and I think this feud is going to continue on on SmackDown Live and lead to a match at Backlash, so we'll see what happens with that. We get to the Raw Tag Team Championship match, which was Cesaro and Sheamus, The Bar, versus Braun Strowman and a mystery partner. Braun Strowman basically says that you are my partner, and he goes looking around at the crowd, and I thought he was going to say he was teaming with everyone in the audience or something and making it a handicap match still. But instead, what ends up happening is Braun Strowman walks through the crowd, walks past No Way Jose, a bunch of NXT superstars, and he picks a kid out of the crowd who was 10 years old. We later find out that it's referee John Cone's son, um, and we find out his name is Nicholas. Nicholas basically stands in the corner looking petrified the entire match, and at one point he gets tagged in, and I thought Cesaro was going to uh, give him an uppercut, but it turns out Braun Strowman gets tagged back in, and he beat the tag team champions on his own, and Braun Strowman and Nicholas are your tag team champions. Odd way to end it, but whatever. I wasn't a big fan of the match. I gave that match also a C-, minus, so that's tied for the worst match of the night, in my opinion. Did not like it. Uh, don't like them beating the Raw Tag Team Champions like that. Now, we get to the main event match. It was for the Universal Championship. We had Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. Um, The fans wanted nothing to do with this match at this point. I don't know if it's because they're tired, restless. They also probably hate Roman Reigns, and they're not fans of Brock Lesnar, to all of which I understand. I am not a Roman Reigns hater. I actually think he is a tremendous talent. I just think that they could do different things with his character. Uh, Brock, I would like to see more stuff from him in-ring-wise than just suplexes and F5s. So... We're watching this Universal Championship match, and the fans are getting very upset at it. Um, There were lots of spears and F5s, lots of kickouts. Uh, The ending happens basically when Brock Lesnar hits those MMA elbows similar that he did on Randy Orton and busts Roman Reigns open real bad. And Roman Reigns is bleeding. He has the crimson mask on, and he hits a big spear. One, two, Lesnar kicks out, and then I think there were two more F5s, a total of six F5s. And Roman Reigns is put down 
by the Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar. He gets the victory here in a match that I would give a C plus to based off of reaction and what they tried to do. It could have been way better, though, than this. I'm not a big fan of it. But we'll see what happens going forward with Roman Reigns and Lesnar. Does that mean he signed a new contract? Nobody knows for sure. Overall, guys, I gave that show a C plus. Like I said, it's a run-of-the-mill show. Uh, it, it's in the middle. It's not your worst WrestleMania of all time. And it's not your best WrestleMania of all time. It's kind of in the middle. Probably more towards the lower half if I had to choose. Um, overall, though, I want to know what you guys thought of the show. Get in contact with me. In the description, I will have my Twitter, my Facebook, and any other way that you guys want to contact me. Uh, you can check out, I have YouTube videos as well if you want to see videos while hearing audio. Um, I appreciate anybody who took the time out to click on this. If you're a wrestling fan, please give me a follow on here. And I appreciate talking to all of you. This has been Everything Pro Wrestling with our live WrestleMania 34 review. I appreciate everyone who took the time to listen. We are out. Peace.